Do you have a dream? Something you've always wanted to do, but haven't because the status quo was too comfortable, too safe, or the change too scary? I always dreamt of having my own company. And last year, I stopped my corporate career and started... Sorry. No, oh, you haven't heard anything of this? Do you want me to start again? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Do you have a dream? Something you've always wanted to do but haven't because the status quo is too comfortable, too safe, or the change too scary? I always dreamt of having my own business. And last year, I stopped my corporate career and started my own business in frozen yogurt. People around me said, wow, that is courageous. And I can say that courage doesn't mean that you're not afraid, because I was, and I still am, but I'm doing it anyway. So in 2009, I was on vacation in LA with my kids, and we saw frozen yogurt stores on every corner of the street. People were lining up, and my kids knew it from series like Gossip Girl, and they wanted to try. So we tried it, we loved it so much, we went back every single day of that vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so back home, on one of our normal evenings, me behind my computer, my kids doing homework, one of my daughters said, gee, I really feel like having frozen yogurt. It's stupid we don't have it here. And I thought, yeah, why don't we have it here? In the land of cows and the best yogurt in the world? So that instance, I closed my mailbox and started Googling. And I was working for IBM 50, 60 hours a week and running my household with four teenage kids at the same time. Every spare moment I had, I spent on my frozen yogurt business plan. And the whole idea of setting up my own company around my passion for good food captured my life. My enthusiasm infected my sister and my business partner, Alric, and we decided to do it together. We wrote to US leading brands and um, asking them about franchising, and we found out that their yogurt was based on powder, so that was no option. So how do you make real, fresh, frozen yogurt? We found out at the Gelato University in Italy. <laughs> we then rented this huge 180-kilo machine, put it in the kitchen, and started experimenting to get the perfect taste. And for months, we had testers coming in, <laughs> in and out to taste our best recipe, and from hockey teams to neighbors, young and old. And at one point, we even got a call from the electricity company because the machine was using power current, 380 volt, and our electricity bill had gone so up that they must have thought that we were using uh, or growing wheat plants in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> in the summer of 2010, we opened our tasting lab in Spoiled, a trendy fashion store. And during this time, I was still working for IBM full-time and working for us on weekends and on evenings. And my house was a mess, my kids were complaining, and by fall, I was nearly burned out. And even though doing frost was so much fun and giving me a lot of energy, doing both at the same time was just physically impossible. So I had to choose. Frost was where my heart was, but no way able to provide me the income and the, and the security that uh, I had with IBM. So, tired and confused and in no state to make any decision, I found a way to buy some time, figure out what to do. I applied for a six-month sabbatical with IBM. And it took about one month to recover physically, to put IBM in the fridge, and then to focus 
razor sharp on the plan to capture the frozen yogurt market in the Netherlands. A few months later, in April this year, we opened the first three of the seven shops we had in Amsterdam last summer. And this winter, we're working on frostifying every other major city in the Netherlands. <laughs> for all of this to happen, there were three things for me that I would like to share with you. First one, sharp focus. I always knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, and I knew my criteria. It had to be something I'm totally passionate about, something that has growth potential, and something uh, that would make a difference in the market. And after I had walked into my opportunity in California, I started visualizing my own frozen yogurt brand being all natural, fun, Dutch. I visualized claiming the market, running the operations, and seeing, feeling the fulfillment of seeing happy faces in line. I calculated how much revenue and profit I needed to live, built the plan, and then took action. And we needed high traffic locations in Amsterdam. And you'll be surprised that if you're clear on your vision, how many opportunities just suddenly pop up out there? Second, create your story. What do I mean by this? And I'll give you a personal example. 14 years ago, expecting my fourth daughter, I found myself suddenly on my own with four kids, or almost four kids. And if I listened to all the well-intended advice of friends, family, or anyone on the street, I would never have had the courage to work full-time, and especially not in the type of high-demanding jobs that I had. The story out there was, you can't be a good mother and have a good career at the same time. But going for it anyway has given me fulfillment, freedom for me and my kids, and a life example for my girls to pursue their own ambitions. And I'm proud of this. How about the stories of throwing away a hard-earned corporate career? Stories about only 5% actually making it of the startups. And hey, sell something frozen in a country where it's freezing 265 days a year? <laughs> when I did my pro and con list to decide whether I should stay with IBM or go for Frost, I had about 100 reasons to, to stay with IBM. What I realized what the, was that most of those reasons were b based on fear and doubt. Fear to fail, fear to lose security, um, doubt to you know, do I have what it takes to be an entrepreneur? And these were my own stories I had to let go of to create the story I wanted to live. Third one is a simple one, but the nicest one. <laughs> be nice. People warn me, doing business is tough. It's a cutthroat world where you have to be tough as well or you'll pull the shortest string. But I have found so many nice people around me who genuinely wanted to help. From a CEO of a worldwide market research company who offered to test our concept, to ex-colleagues, help set up standard procedures, to suppliers being really very lenient on payment terms. You can say it's being lucky, but I think it's just being nice for the sake of being nice to each other. And even though I've been cheated on, and heavily disappointed at times. I do believe in the basic good nature of people. And treating people fairly and with respect is how we choose to do business. And it's nice. But it's also about being nice to yourself. Um, yeah, it's also about being nice to yourself, especially actually about being nice to yourself and allowing yourself to make mistakes. I used to be nice to everyone around me, but pretty tough on myself. But I've realized that successful things come by trial and error, ups and downs. And I've learned to be more gentle on myself. 
like I would for a child who's learning to swim. You don't push him or her in a deep all at once. So as you can see, I've learned a lot from this challenging, eye-opening, but ultimately fun process. And I've learned a lot from my mistakes. And I've also learned that uh, the biggest mistake you can make in business is to not do it at all. And as they say, it's the things you don't do in life that you regret. Thank you.